Welcome to the final QPR preview show of the season. You just saw a clip there from Saturday afternoon as QPR won back-to-back games for the first time since October and guaranteed survival. There's another clip at the end of the show, but first let's reflect on that happy afternoon in Stoke and look ahead to the final game against Bristol City. It was a very forgettable match against Stoke, but a truly unforgettable away day. Amazing support, great scenes at the end of the game, great to be a part of. And it was nice, Dave, to stay up on our own terms, not relying on other teams losing. Yeah, it was good. I mean, the, the atmosphere was fantastic in a way, wasn't it? You know, um, everyone was really behind the team. And even at half-time, like, the first half was pretty dire. But, you know, they were getting cheered off by the fans. You know, I think everyone just wanted to have a good day out. And, you know, like I say, we're still in our own hands. It, it felt a little bit more relaxed than it could have done. Because it's like, well, if, if it does go wrong, we have still got the next game to, to save it. So... But, you know, it did help that Stoke were absolutely awful on the day, weren't they? And, you know, made it quite easy for us. But um, thankfully, we got over the line in the end. Yeah, I mean, it said 2,000 fans, but it did honestly feel like 10,000, 20,000. It was phenomenal support. And I think you're right. I don't think anyone was that nervous because there was always the backup game and that did help because there was not much to cheer about in the match, to be honest, especially, like you say, the first half. But we kept going, kept behind the team. It's crazy though to think that without Reading's point deduction, it would still be going to the final day, and that's with those back-to-back wins. So it did get a little bit too close for comfort, didn't it? Really, and the club needs to have a hard, long, hard look at itself in the summer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, we were celebrating at the end, but it, it did feel a bit hollow, and you could see it with the players as well. They were pleased, but it was like we shouldn't have been in this position, and we've got away with it. So that Reading points deduction has kept us up, really. Without that, we'd be needing something on on Monday, wouldn't we? And um, yeah, it would be a squeaky bum time for us. You know how we've got in this position is is a farce, to be honest. I mean, it's been such a weird season with the starting so early, the World Cup break, and changing of the managers. It just seems to have gone on forever. But um, they need to learn a lot from this season and make sure this doesn't happen again. Yeah, such a strange season. I was only thinking the other day that we actually started in July, didn't we? We're now into May. So the only month we didn't play a game in was June. I I don't think that'll happen again for a long, long time. Well, hope not anyway, because you don't don't know with football. You tend to like do something once and then stick with it and think it's a good idea, don't we? Um, Albert Adoma got the goal. Lots of rumours this week that Monday will be his last game. It was announced last year, obviously, that he had a two-year deal. But it seems he might have like a release clause, like what happened with Charlie Austin. Do you think they'd be right to let him go? I think so, yeah. I mean, he's done well, hasn't he? He's been here three years now. He's not been at his best this year as he struggled quite a lot. Even on last Saturday, I don't think he had the best of games. But he scored, he scored the goal that's kept us up. And it's a, it's a nice way for him to end. You know, he's a he seems a really good guy. He's obviously a fan of the club. Can't, it's a nice way for him to go out if they do do it like that. I do worry if they give him another year. Not sure it's going to go as well next year. But probably a bit like with Charlie Austin last year. It's probably time to... You know, go our separate ways. Yeah, I think, I, I don't want to be harsh here, but I feel like with Adoma, fans give him a lot more slack because he's a QPR fan. I think if you take away the fact that he was a QPR fan, people would be showing him the door. And I don't know, I, I think we should have let him go last summer in some ways, but at least now he's had that moment against Stoke, like you said. And he's had a knack over his time, hasn't he, to create memorable moments. Leighton Orient was one, wasn't it? And he remembered fondly, even if we do part ways. What we've left ourselves with, of course, now is a dead rubber. And let's be honest, we're happy to say it's a dead <laughs> rubber. Does anyone really care about QPR against Bristol City? But there is an element of intrigue, I think, from the QPR point of view in terms of could be interesting to see how Ainsworth sets up. Does he change things because we're safe? Does he try and play more on the front foot to prove a point higher up the pitch, maybe? Maybe have some passes of the ball. So it may be a dead rubber, but I get the sense a few of us are maybe using it as a bit of a test for Ainsworth to see how he does. Yeah, it's, it's the first game he's had where there's no pressure on it. So I think you kind of can give him a pass for, for what's gone on so far. I've been a, I've been very concerned with the, the style of play. Not necessarily the last two games. I think they had to do that the last two games. But the games before that, I think we've been pretty poor and a bit aimless in how we're playing, you know, especially with the players we've got. So I hope it, you know, you kind of want to see a mix between a bit more direct, you know, and aggressive and what Beal and Warburton were doing, like playing a bit of football. We, a mix of the two will probably work for us. I'm not sure we're going to get that with Ainsworth, but it'll be interesting to see what we do on Monday. Will he give a couple of the B team players game? You know, so there's nothing on it. Is it, is it a chance to have a look at a few people or will we go with the same again? It's, it's going to be interesting. 
Yeah, I have a feeling that if he sets up exactly the same and just sits back and is happy to only have 20% possession, I think there might be a few half fans a bit angry about it and there might be a bit of a reaction to it. I don't think it's going to be plain sailing for him. Um, and of course, Ainsworth has been the main topic of debate this week on our forum and elsewhere as well, I've noticed. He seems to be splitting opinion quite a lot. I don't want anyone to listen in to take this the wrong way. I'm in no way saying what I... To be honest, I don't even know how I feel about it. It's so hard to go back and forth <laughs> with playing devil's advocate, really. But I have no doubt he will stay. But do you feel he is the right man to not just take us into next season, but to take us forward? Got a lot of concerns about it. He he, don't, he deserves to stay on. We've, we've stayed up. He's turned it around. I mean, we looked dead and buried two weeks ago. And he deserves a lot of credit for putting in a game plan that's beaten Burnley and Stoke, you know, because I didn't think that was possible. But, you know, going forward, I have concerns about the style. I have a few concerns about the things he's saying about... I, I do agree with him that we need a bit more, a bit more experience in the team. But um, I don't know if he's going to go a bit too far the other way from what we have been doing with developing players. Yeah, I've got a lot of concerns about how it's going to go. Part of what got us in this mess was letting Mick Beal do what he wanted last summer. And it does sound like they're just going to let Ainsworth do what he wants to do this summer. And that does concern me a little bit. It needs to, you know, if it does go wrong next season, you can see us having a squad of players not suited to the next manager. So there, there are certainly some concerns. But, you know, I mean, it would be very harsh to get rid of him on the back of keeping us up, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I have no doubt he's going to be here. It's just whether he's still the white man going forward. And you're right to raise the issue of if he's going to be bringing in his own transfer targets to suit how he wants to set us up. It goes against everything the club's kind of said over the last 18 months or so, where they've kind of said, even when Beal came in, where they had a list of targets that they'd already had and Pal was already on it and Clark Salter was on the list and they planned two transfer windows ahead. That would all be going out the window if Ainsworth brings in X, Y and Z players that he knows. Yeah, he would. I mean, obviously, he should, he's got to have a say. He's, he's he's kind of in charge of it. And you, you'd you expect him to say, I think we need strengthening here, here, and here. And there are some players I'll think of. But it should go through this recruitment team we've got. And they should decide together. Otherwise, what's the point of having a recruitment team and a director of football if you're just going to do what the manager wants? They need to work together on it. Um, you can imagine there's going to be some, I think there's going to be some big changes down there this summer with, I'll be surprised if Les stays, you know, beyond the end of the season. So there's potentially a new director of football. But, um, yeah, it does concern me a little bit about what sort of players we're going to sign. Yeah, I don't envy the powers that be at the club at the moment, to be honest, because I feel a little bit like they're stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Because if they stick with Ainsworth, obviously, and then he starts the season badly, so many fans are going to be saying, look, we knew this was coming. And mm -hmm. some already say that he got us out of trouble, whereas other people are saying, well, he got us into trouble in the first place. And... Then people say he put the way he's played in the last couple of games, did he only do that to get results or would that be his long-term plan? And I think when you think about us only having 20% possession, yes, we were doing a job. But I genuinely suspect he doesn't mind us playing that way. And I think over the season, fans will mind us. It, it, we're OK with it, obviously, at Burnley and Stoke, but it's not going to go down well if he starts the season like that, is it? No, I think he will want to play that way from home quite a lot. And it might be successful. We've done all right away from home this season. But at home, I don't think you can play like that. You need to have a bit more of a mix about it. You know, we've had a dreadful season at home where we've hardly won any games. I've hardly scored any goals at the loft end. I think if that continues next year and we're not, we're not even going to have the ball next year, it's it's not going to, it won't go well. You know, Ainsworth's got a lot of support from, from the fans. He got great reception at the end of the game on Saturday. But you can see it turning if... Um, if we don't start next season well, he's, you know, it's on the cards, isn't it? Yeah, the fans were giving him, like you say, a rousing send-off at the end of the game. And the the negative to that, though, is it was a hard watch. The first half against Stoke, mm. we literally had about 10 touches of the ball. I don't feel like he can go and set about doing that for 46 games of the season. Maybe it'll be something he does do away, like you say, but it's hard to, to, to have such a contrast in your style from where we've been going. And, my concern is it's a long road back. You mentioned before, if they go down this route and let him sign all the players he wants, if it goes wrong, you can't then be hiring like your Warburton, Critchley, Beal types again because the players won't be there to suit them either, will it? Yeah, it was, it was frustrating at the weekend. I, I was delighted we won the game. But the only time we did play a bit of football, we scored. It was a good build-up for the goal. We, did, but we never did it again, really. And it's like... Well, this lot were there for the taking. If we did it a bit more, do we, do we want to do it? You know, we just seem to just sort of like settle. We'll just settle for this now. 
hopefully that was just because they needed the result and there was a lot of pressure on them. I mean, it'll be different next season, but um, yeah, I'm like you, I've got a few concerns about it. You're right, though. When we actually do try and play football, we've got the players to do it, obviously, with chair, low. But in the first half, Dickie, when he drove forward that one time, set up low, had, that was the only chance we had in the first half. It's there, they can do it. It's just probably getting the balance right, and maybe that's what we'll see next season. As for this Bristol City match itself, then, who would you like to see feature in this one, if you could pick a few names? I'd love to see Armstrong involved. I mean, he was injured again at the weekend. He doesn't seem to be able to pluck two games in a row, does he? But I'd love to see him involved. If he could just get one goal in front of the loft end, that would just make the season. It'd end it on quite a good note. Um, there's the guy in the B team, is it um, Rafa E. Pedder, I think his name is? Seems to always seem to score and do all right for the B team. Why not have a look at him, maybe off the bench? But I personally don't think they're going to be major changes to the team. I think you'll probably go with what's worked the last few games. You know, it, although there's nothing on the game, he's not going to want to lose that last game. You don't want to lose your last home game going into the summer. It's been such a bad season. You know, he's going to want to end on a good note. Um, so I don't think there'll be like major changes. Yeah, I think you're right with that. The home record has been so bad, like you said there. He will not want to end with yet another home defeat. And it'd be nice to head into the summer with everyone a little bit more positive still. I'd like to see Amos start because obviously some people are saying his contract's up, whether they've got one of those options to give him another year, I don't know. But he's such an important player. Statistically, we always do better with him in the team. I'd like to see him start. Maybe Willock in place of Lowe, see if he can get his mojo back before the summer. You mentioned Armstrong as well. He, is, I was so disappointed on Saturday when he wasn't even on the bench because you just knew we didn't have that option. But he did four games and missed four then did four games and missed five, did Burnley miss Stoke. It can't be helping his development or his confidence, can it, to keep coming in and out of injuries like this? No, and it's been like it all season. He's, he's, you see, like you say, you see him for a few games and he's missing for a few. Especially when he starts game, he has to come off after an hour because he looks exhausted. You know, something they're going to have to work on, especially when you think next season, I mean, I don't know if Chris Martin's going to stay or not, but we've got just him and Dykes as forwards until we go in the transfer market. You need him to play more games than you really. He's hardly started any this year. He's got two, three games he started. You're going to need him to play a lot more because he's not going to get any better by not playing. Yeah. we'd look Like you said, it'd be great if he could just even get a cameo and get that goal. It'd be the perfect end. Speaking of scoring goals, do you think Naki Wells, odds on for a brace in this one? Oh, yeah. He's about, he always scores against us. Then he has a certainty, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I would have had Chris Martin to score against us. We were still at Bristol City as well. You know, we used to score against us. But, yeah, I'm sure Wales would do well against us. I'm just glad there isn't anything on the game because the thought of him relegating us would have been an absolute nightmare. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was inevitable. That would have happened, wasn't it, if it had come to that. Final prediction of the whole season then? Do you think we're going to end the season happy or not? Yeah, let's go positive. I mean, we've done well the last two games. Hopefully, we can we can continue it and be another... A close game, I think probably go 2-1, hopefully for us. Yeah, I think I was going to go the same 2-1 and maybe 35% possession, maybe a little bit more this week. <laughs> I want to finish by saying thank you to each and every one of you for watching throughout the season, sticking with us for all the gloom, all the negative stats you've had to put up and all the ups and downs. Thank you to everyone who's commented. Thank you to everyone who's posted on our forum as well. Genuinely means a lot to us and it makes it worthwhile sitting here each week doing it. I want to say thanks to Dave as well. Embarrassing now, but he's given up his time every single week to put himself through 15 minutes chatting to me. And in my view, he's a leading voice analysing QPR. So thanks, Dave. That's not a problem. I've enjoyed it all season. It's been good to do. Yeah, enjoyed it despite everything that's gone on. What a season yeah, to start doing this. Despite these. what we've watched, it's been good to do this. <laughs> The preview shows might be over for 22-23, but we'll actually be back next week anyway with Brian for an end-of-season show. And over the next few weeks, we'll have some podcasts rating the players out of 10, so that should be interesting. Join us for them. Join us next season in the Championship. And thank you again. Here comes another clip from Saturday. And come on, you ours.